Hi everyone, welcome to today's fairy tale Fortnite event where I participate in top 10 Tuesdays and talk about my 10 favorite books to recommend. And if you look at my bookshelves right here, uh, this is uh, double faced out so there's a whole row of books behind this row that you can kind of see peeping out there. Uh, so I have books behind books and up here uh, you've got even more books that are double packed, double featured, double placed, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I have even more. These are all front to back, wall to wall fairy tales. Um, I might even have a couple behind my mythological and mermaid books back there, but I don't think I do. I think it's all mythology and mermaids up there. I could be wrong. There could be even more than I don't know about. Um, but I have some more up at the top too that are just like on top of one another. That's mostly fairy tales too because my shelves are full. Um, so what do you recommend when you have this many fairy tale books? So um, these are my top 10 books to recommend and I hope you'll check them out. So here is a quick peek at the 10, um, 11 actually. I cannot count and I am too lazy to take them out. Plus, I don't know which book I would take out. Um, so we have 11 here, not 10. But here is a quick peek at all of the books I am about to talk about as the ones I recommend the most in the fairy tale world. So, here we go. There's no particular order on these. I'm starting with Ella Enchanted because it is the first fairy tale retelling that I ever read. And it got me back into the game and I absolutely loved it and I'm kind of afraid to reread it even though I really want to because I'm afraid it'll be one of those why did I ever like this book moments and I have such a special place in my heart for Ella Enchanted. Uh, it's by Gail Carson Levine and this is the only book that um, is in my top five all-time favorite books list that is a kid's book and you can kind of see it's all battered up. I've read it so many times over the years. So, Ella Enchanted, definitely a must read. Another early fairy tale retelling for me was Beauty by Robin McKinley. And I have just about every book you could ever um, imagine by her. And I love her. And this is another book that's really beat up from being reread several times over the years. You've even got some creases on the back going on there. Um, so I thought that was another really good choice. Um, I love recommending Robin McKinley. This was my first exposure to her. And I would recommend reading anything from this author as well. The Goose Girl by Shannon Hale is yet another book that defies um, tradition here. And I have all of the books that Shannon Hale has written. Uh, the cover has changed with the paperback release. It's not going to look like this if you go looking for it. But I think there's something really special about the hand-illustrated covers that um, so many of her early books had. Um, but I really like the unusualness of this one. It's based on a rare tale that isn't done as frequently as some of the others. And it made me fall in love with Shannon Hale and buy all of her other books. So I would always recommend her, and I've been lucky enough to meet the author at signings twice now. And now looking at some of the more modern books in my collection that I recommend, um, Sisters Ride by Jackson Pierce. I thought this one was especially appropriate because I actually loaned it out to somebody um, as a recommendation. So it's obviously something I recommend a lot. I love the cover. Um, I really like the fierceness of the characters in this book. Um, there's also two other books, Sweetly and Fathomless, and Jackson Pierce is coming out with a fourth book in November called Cold Spell. So I really love all of her books and the unique ways she writes an original story with wisps of fairy tales in them. So I would definitely recommend her if you're looking for something a little more action-packed. Kill Me Softly by Sarah Cross. This is one um, that I read and fell in love with. The writing style is simply stunning. I mean, if you just look at the gorgeous hook for this one, which I have included in its entirety in my review, just the way she words things is beautiful and magical, and I would read anything by her based on this alone. But it starts off with... Birthdays were wretched, delicious things when you lived in Beau Rivage. The clock struck midnight, and presents gave way to magic. Curses bloomed. Girls bit into sharp apples instead of birthday cake. 
choked on the ruby and white slippers and collapsed into enchanted sleep. And I'm not going to read the whole prologue, but a couple of lines is good. And you can go on to my blog, which I will link, and read the entire opening hook, which is just stunning. Um, and there is a short story that you can get on Sarah's website for free called After the Ball. And I will be reviewing it this year during Fairy Tale Fortnite, as well as putting up a redux of Kill Me Softly, so that if you missed it the first time around, you'll see it again this year. The Princess Curse by Mary Haskell. This is another one that's just the empty jacket because it is loaned out right now. And Jason Chan did the amazing artwork. And um, I can't say enough good things about this. This is middle grade, but it is a mashup of two fairy tales and uh, a little bit of a mythological tale. And I can't tell you about all of them without spoiling things, so I would just recommend checking out Misty's review at the Book Rat for this year's Fairy Tale Fortnite, or um, look at the review I did when the book first came out. But it's a fun book. It's for younger ages, but it has a maturity to it that would uh, sway older readers to its side as well. So I definitely recommend this. Scarlet by Marissa Meyer. This is the second book in the Lunar Chronicles series. Uh, the first book is Cinder, and um, Cinder is not technically one of my top ten in the way that Scarlet is. There were a couple of small issues I personally had with it that I don't think most people would have. But knowing Marissa's background um, and where she was coming from and what her influences were, I could really see it in a way that bothered me, but I still really enjoyed reading it. Um, with Scarlet, I didn't have any of those issues. It didn't remind me of anything else at any point in time, and uh, the world building is fantastic and extreme, and over the years I've seen how much heart and research Mercer has put into this series, and it really comes forth in Scarlet in new, innovative ways, and this book captured me in a way that I wanted Cinder too, but it just didn't. Um, so I would definitely recommend Scarlet as my favorite book in the series so far. And there are still two to go, so I can't wait to see where this is going next. Enchanted by Alethea Contis. This is um, a pretty, pretty cover, one that's striking and makes you want it without even knowing what it's about. And then it is a mashup of so many fairy tales. It's like the fairy tale world came and vomited all over this book and there are going to be sequels so it's really amazing everything she does uh the unique spin she puts on things um the core of the story is sort of princess and the froggy uh but there's so much more to it than that and i just had so much fun with this i actually had to read this twice because the first time i read it i didn't really appreciate it um, the way I did on my second read and it could just be I wasn't in the frame of mind for a fairy tale at that time um, but the second time I read it it just blew me away with how powerful it was and how well written it was and I am utterly enchanted with Enchanted. The Woodcutter by Kate Danley. This is a new book to me. I just received it for review this year. It is available exclusively as a paperback or a Kindle ebook because uh, Kate has signed a six month exclusive contract with Kindle. But The Woodcutter has already won a bunch of awards and um, I'm going to be reviewing it during Fairy Tale Fortnite and interviewing Kate. And as I read it, I was just blown away by how intricate and unique and different it is. This is not like anything else you've ever read. It's not a straight out fairy tale, but it utilizes elements and characters from fairy tales to create this layered mystery of it's full of intrigue. It's dark. Um, it follows the woodcutter, which you don't often see. And there was just something magical and special about it. And I'm going to have such a hard time reviewing this because it was just so good. And I don't really have words to explain to you how I liked it, even now, a couple weeks after reading it. 
Shadows on the Moon by Zoe Marriott. You have listened to me talk before on how much I love Zoe and how much I love Shadows on the Moon, and it is still true. I recommend it all the time. Uh, this is very dark. This is not your traditional fairy tale. Uh, this is a Japanese... Chinese hybrid mix, I guess you could say, because there's a little bit of both cultures in it, although um, it leans a little more Japanese in terms of word usage, um, but with the occurrences um, of Shadow Brides, it has a very Chinese feel to it as well, um, but it is um, a very dark retelling of Cinderella uh, and it's not so much a retelling because you're not going to see much of the original story in there but it is very well done it really established Zoe Marriott as a exceptional author in my eyes um, I've read everything she's written I import her books from the UK because they come out like half a year to a year later in the United States um, so this is actually the UK cover and the um, U.S. cover looks different, but I love this book. I cannot say enough good things about this book, but I will tell you that it is very dark, and it is not for everyone, um, and there will be people who don't like it. I personally loved it. And finally, Heart's Blood by Juliet Marillier. Um, This is my absolute all-time favorite retelling of Beauty and the Beast. It is, once again, non-traditional. It takes place... Um, in the Celtic era, and uh, the quote-unquote beast character suffers from a palsy that uh, leaves him without proper use of uh, part of his body, and so you have the fairy tale grounded in reality instead of in fantasy and the fae and magic the way so many versions of Beauty and the Beast are and um I absolutely fell in love with this it was actually the first book I read by Juliet Marillier I read it before I read her Daughter of the Forest um book that is so well acclaimed and I actually liked it better and I don't know if it's because I have a special soft spot for Beauty and the Beast because I read it first what but I absolutely adore it I would recommend it it's definitely an adult novel I wouldn't pick it up if um you're under like 16 17 just because it's a little mature at times but it is definitely well done and not enough people know about this and when they know about Juliet Murley or Heart's Blood is not the book that springs to mind for them and I feel like it really should be um so these are the books that I recommend most frequently when I am talking about fairy tale retellings and which books I think you should read. And I would recommend every single one of these. I am doing a big giveaway for the fairy tale giveaway hop. And you have a chance to win any one of these that you want as well as any other book during the event. Um, I might recommend picking one of these because they're my favorites. But anything at all that we feature during the event. And there will be more details on today's giveaway blog hop post for that as well. So thanks for sticking by and I look forward to talking with you again soon. And have a great rest of your day. Bye.